afternoon, good evening as it may be. Welcome everyone to the Collage Artists of America uh, fabulous exhibit, Interplay. Um, I am not going to waste any time here, but I will note, um, let's see here. Uh, welcome to everyone on behalf of the San Fernando Valley Arts and Cultural Center. Um, formerly, we were a brick and mortar facility. Uh, now we are operating virtually, though um, some of that may change in the future. So uh, welcome all. And that said, I am going to welcome um, Sylvia Goulden, the president of Collage Artists of America. Well, I, I too welcome all of you. It's nice to see all your faces, most of you, when you get them on. <laughs> uh, it, I want to the, welcome members and the non-members, any guests that are with us. And uh, we're all very excited about the Interplay exhibit and extend our thanks to all of those who entered and uh, those artists who uh, were accepted into the show and and to our award winners. Um, let's, I especially want to thank Penny Fine for putting the show together. Thank you, Penny, for... Uh, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, putting an exhibit into place and making it happen. And she always does a great job. So uh, all of our all of our board members need a big thank you because they all work and do each of their responsibilities to the best of their ability. And it's always great and um, done extremely well. Um, um, we have some announcements to start with, and I think we will start with uh, Suzanne Belcher and Patrice Goldberg uh, to tell us more about our membership, which keeps growing. Uh, Suzanne or Patrice? Okay, I don't know if Patrice uh, was able to make it. I don't see her there. So um, just good evening again, everyone. Uh, I know it's late for some of you attending uh, tonight but we're glad you're here. I want to congratulate, as Sylvia did, all of us, again, who got accepted into this very competitive exhibit and special congrats to our award winners. I think we had, and Penny would reconfirm this, 270 entries and only 96 pieces, I think were selected. So thanks. Also to our juror, Nancy K. Turner, for selecting a ex really exciting exhibition. We currently have 219 members from all over the country now, as well as Canada, making close to half our membership non-local or from out of state. This also applies to our hardworking, wonderful board of directors, six of whom are either from out of state or non-local Californians. COVID and Zoom changed all of our lives in more ways than, than one for sure, but it has really benefited uh, a lot of organizations who are virtual. Oh man. Um, what's happened? I said host has stopped your video. Um, I don't know, can you hear me? We can, we can hear you, yes. you, but we can't see your face any longer. It's just your name. I can't see your face. Okay, well, you don't really have to see my face. <laughs> we start ah, my video. There you go. Oh, there yeah. you go. Okay. Can, can anyone okay. hear me? Yes, we yes. can. You can. Good. <laughs> so as we continue to blossom, we need more and more help. And as you can see, Anyone anywhere can become a volunteer, a board member, or co-chair. Um, if you're interested, um, please let our president, Sylvia Golden, know. We do have, if you go on our website, you will be able to see positions that uh, need help or that are open. And um, Patrice was, uh, she's our, our real volunteer 
she can get anybody to be a volunteer. We've been very lucky uh, getting people to jump on. We've had two new board members recently and important physicians, Jennifer Robertson, who's in Seattle, and uh, Lorraine Glasner, who is in Pennsylvania. So um, it's exciting, actually. And we have a fantastic board. So if you are interested um, in any level, get in touch. Or if you're interested in a position, membership can always use help, any of the positions. So that's about it for me, uh, Sylvia, unless there's something else that uh, you want me to say. No, nope, that's just nice for now. Perfect. Thank okay. you for <laughs> encouraging people to volunteer because yeah, we all we, we love each other. And it's just such a great organization, guys. Um, also, yeah. I just might mention Facebook. Uh, Coileen might have mentioned that, but uh, we're about 13,000 uh, members uh, on Facebook. They um, have joined Facebook and we have gotten a lot of members to the organization through our Facebook page. Good, thank you. Um, so is Lauren here with us or not today? Uh, I don't, I don't see her. Difference. Okay, well, uh, then I'm going to ask Quay Lynn to give us a little update on uh, maybe on World Collage Day and, uh, and our newsletter. And she always has a lot of information for us. Quaylin. Okay, hi, my name is Quaylin Lun. I am the newsletter editor for this organization and I'll start plugging it. Um, the deadline for news is the second of every month, although sometimes I'll take a vacation. Um, and really anyone can submit, you can submit articles, you can submit graphics, you can submit um, news about yourself, you can submit even like collages that you have done that aren't in a show. I think that's what people think, oh, they have to be in a show and it has to be bonafide or like that. Well, there's no such thing. Um, if you want to submit something that you've done, please do just by the second of the month. Um, let's see what else. Um, oh, Okay, the next newsletter coming up, and it's I'm working on it, and it's close closer to completion than it was. Is going to have uh, pictures of the show winners and a recap of the Zoom meeting, the really excellent Zoom meeting by Skylar McGee. Although I would really encourage you to look at the video of it because it's really good, and um, also it's going to have some information about something called World Collage Day. World Collage Day is going to be on Saturday, May 11th, 2024, from 11 Pacific Daylight Time to 1 o'clock Pacific Daylight Time, and it's going to be a Zoom event. And if you want to present, what you need to do is to check the newsletter for instructions. Um, our publicity chair, Lauren Reckner, is going to be hosting it, and she's done it a couple of times in the past and so she's kind of an old pro at it now and and so we're going to be accepting about 20 people to present their work I think it's pretty much an artist's choice work and then you would just contact her um through the like like addresses in the newsletter it's an email and and let her know that you're interested in presenting your work and then we can put you in. And I think instructions for attending the event without presenting are probably going to be forthcoming. So that's what I have. And um, don't forget our Facebook page. Um, Facebook has got 13,000 members and it's under Collage Artists of America. I see that Sharon Held wants to know what time it's going to be on May 11th. And it's going to be 11 to 1 Pacific Daylight Time. Okay, and that, that's what I have. Great. Thank you, Quaylin. That's We'll look forward to the newsletter. Everybody be sure and take a look because it's always so exciting to see what uh, Quaylin has come up with. It's uh, very attractive and, and it has lots of wonderful information. 
and you can catch up on all the news uh, uh like collage day collage uh day that's coming world up. collage day world collage and um is there anybody else that wants to make uh an announcement that be uh that would be uh pertain to all of us i will be asking later um uh, for artists that are here to if anybody wants to talk about their piece that's in the show you'll have an opportunity later after we do our presentation of awards but at this point, I think if there's nobody else that wants to have a collage announcement, I will go turn to our interplay juror, Nancy K. Turner. Thank you so much, Nancy, for doing such a wonderful job. I'm sure it was not easy to through all those uh, entries that we had but you did a great job. And if you at this time would like to say, or we'd like to welcome you and you'd like to say a few words about your jury selection, we would love to hear you. Is Nancy here? Nancy? She doesn't seem to have her microphone. I see the camera. I see. Wait, is she? Hmm. I don't see her. Is she here? Nancy, yeah. Is it Nancy Lawrence? Nancy, no, Turner. Nancy Turner. Her name is here. Oh, I but, see her. Yeah. Um, oh, she's not on maybe at the moment. Yeah, okay. I, I, I did just uh, write to her. So, um, okay. Well, listen, let's, uh, you know, we'll wait for her to come on and then we can hear what she has to say afterwards. But um, I, I'll just take a note here before we do our awards presentation to mention um, the Carol Ann Watterson Award, which is one of the awards that we offer every uh, every show. And uh, that is made possible by a generous endowment from uh, Carol Ann Watterson Estate. And uh, she was a one of the um, among the founding members and quite active in uh, the initiation of collage artists back in the day. And uh, her work is always very simple and elegant, and we like to um, honor her and and uh, remember her with this award. Um, and, and James is here. James. Oh, good. Yes, he won for After Madrid number seven. Congratulations, James. Is it Siever? Siever. Is that how you say your name, James? Is that correct? Yeah? Okay. Uh, Congratulations. And here's Nancy. Nancy. Hi, Nancy. Hi, how are you? Are you? We were just um, waiting for you and so happy that you've joined us. Thank you so much for doing a splendid job. It couldn't have been easy. Oh, Nancy Lawrence. We're looking for Nancy, Nancy Turner. Turner's here too. <laughs> okay. Well, Nancy's where I was. Well, can you hear me, uh, Nancy Turner? I can, indeed. Oh, great. Well, here we go. Thank you so much for doing, I'm sure, a difficult job selecting for this show which has turned out really exciting. And um, there were so many entries. Uh, so thanks so much. Would you like to say a few words for us about uh, how you were able to make a selection? Uh, well, first I wanna congratulate the members because there was extraordinary work. Um, it was incredibly varied. Um, as you know, there were photo montages uh, people who are working strictly from flat material that uh, comes from magazines or any kind of printed material. There were photo collages where people are working in the cybersphere and doing digital collages. There were collages that were mixed media collages. There were um, collages that were narrative in tone. There were collages that were uh, dealt, that were abstract and dealt with either color relationships or, or different or materiality. So, um, you know, uh, you know, picking picking the the uh, the hundred pieces um, was uh, 
I was in a sense easy because the work was so good. Picking the winners was really hard. Picking the, you know, trying to get eight people out of, I mean, I clearly could have picked 25 people. I mean, the work was just really, really good. And, and as I said, is each of those categories is so different. So what I tried to do is uh, to, and then there were assemblages, I, I forgot. There were, there, were, there were low reliefs and then there were assemblages that were, you know, in the round. So, you know, each of those has a different aesthetics. And um, I tried to honor uh, in the in the pick by picking the winners tried to honor different uh, different approaches to collage photo montage photo collage and mixed media collage so um so yeah and i tried to get as many kind of variations as i could so there were work that lo might look very simple but was so refined you know and work that maybe was a little more complicated so i tried to um that was basically what I was trying. I was looking at uh, the author, you know, some of the pieces, I mean, most of the pieces were very authentic looking and uh, very well done. So, uh, so it was a challenge in that regard, but there was so much good work. So it, it was actually kind of easy. Great, great. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That I like the idea that you tried to get uh, something from different categories uh, because we are very versatile, versatile dial well, and there's so many approaches uh well i think we should get on uh with the awards and nancy if you care to say anything as we go along and presenting them just chime in uh, okay or, and uh let's uh call upon penny now and penny will you want to start with our first honorary mention are you around penny Hello. Penny, are you here? Can she unmute herself? I'm sorry. Yeah, I silly me. I forgot to unmute. Okay, so um can we show the yes the image? Uh Pat will show the image. Okay, the first one, since I see Rodney, is casual eugenics. Very oh. interesting, mysterious image. And Oh, this is not casual. No, it isn't. Okay. Casual, this is a different one. This <laughs> is, uh, okay, well, this is the city in a dream. I don't know if Anna is here. I don't think so. Uh, Penny, excuse me. Uh, if you start at the bottom of the list, then Pat will be on the same page as you. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, so uh, Anna Kirby, the city in a dream. This is uh, 11 by 8. Yeah, I'm happy to talk about th this group of, uh, are there eight, seven or eight of them? I'm happy to talk about those because- yes, they, uh, let me, Sure. Let me, let me interrupt again, please. Uh, is Anna here in the group? Is she... I didn't see her. Okay. All right. So let me just set up right now what we'll do. If the artist is here, let's try to get a picture of the artist. And uh, we'll have their work and then a picture of the artist. And, and meanwhile, Nancy could do it, but we kind of group that together. The artist, the picture, and Nancy, okay? Oh, okay, thanks. Uh, so uh, uh, I thought this one was uh, very interesting, the way that she used the material. She had staples. Uh, there were many different layers. It has, uh, it's uh, very surrealistic and, uh, you know, uh, very compelling imagery. And you can see where there's the cut, it's, so it's analog cut, you can actually see the actual cuts. So it's very layered in this narrative and <clears throat> in the way it in incorporates the bed and the way there were staples, there were all kinds of materials you, I can't quite see now that I could see before, but yeah, I love the way this person used the materials. Good, thank you. You're welcome. Penny? Oh, okay. Um, and next is Honey Bun. I have to get it. Oh, okay. Because uh -huh. I just yeah. wrote it down randomly. And the next one is Dick Bjornseth, Honey Buns. Is he here? I don't think so. Yeah, well, just just briefly, this is a more uh, uh, traditional photo montage from uh, magazines from the 1930s, 40s, or 50s. Actually, that's a 50s TV in the back. And uh, 
there was uh, I love the I thought the frame was fabulous. I love the metal, the mixed me the frame. But um, so I really actually it's interesting. I wouldn't call it mixed media because it's it's like the frame is different, but the, the piece is all uh, what I would call a photo montage. But I thought that uh, uh, the artist's aesthetic, the way that they used that yellow that was in all the kitchens then, and the yellow, you know, the uh, the the composition and the color palette in combination with um, uh, like all the circles, the circle in the TV and inside the dishwasher. Uh, I thought that it was, formally it was very interesting. Thanks. Yeah. yeah. And. Oh, thank you, Nancy. And Welcome. then the next one is Nick Mozak. And he said that uh, he might have a work conflict. So I didn't see his name there. Yeah, so this is one of the ones that I was talking about where, the, where obviously the, the materiality, the surface, the texture uh, is very important. And also the, the implicit grid is what holds this together. So although in a sense, there's a lot going on in terms of the surface, the um the the grid and also the little uh, uh pieces that hold the metal in place i just thought this piece was just gorgeous mm -hmm. Colors. And, and, yeah and he had several he had several pieces and uh they were all good and i just picked one of one of his several pieces but they were all really quite beautiful and very um very carefully composed um yeah quite yeah very and good. I'm sorry, did you want to say more, Nancy? No, no, that's good. Yeah. Oh, okay. And um, now we have, finally, I was, Rodney. I was, I was, oh, yeah, casual eugenics. Casual so, eugenics, Rodney Boone, and he is here. Oh, good. So I this was, I thought, was really fascinating because I didn't know if it was a hand-colored uh, photograph, if it was a... Uh, uh, whether he had painted on a, on a photograph himself or if he had found it, but uh, it was a great title because you know eugenics is all about um, uh, controlling genes and it has a lot to do with what the Nazis were trying to do. So the idea of casual eugenics, there was a lot of irony in the title, which was very sophisticated and I thought this was a very sophisticated um, piece and uh, you know the way that the images were put together. Uh, which I thought was just fantastic. So, uh, thank you. And uh, Rodney, are you here? Are we? Yes. Can we pull him up for a minute. And uh, hi, Rodney. And uh, would you like to say something about your piece? Sure. First of all, I want to, you know, thank you all for, um, you know, allowing me to be a part of this whole thing. And um, Nancy, I'm, I'm, I'm very honored by, you know, what you said about this. Um, let me just say a little bit about that, um, what what actually those are. Um, I started collecting uh, what are known as crayon portraits. This is an early photographic process. It's one of the early ones um, prior to, if, this is the first, in, if, if I understand correctly, uh, there weren't enlargers until the 1860s. Mm -hmm. And before then you would have an image the size of, a, of, of the negative basically and you'd have to make contact prints. And so these were the first enlarged pieces, um, but they were so faint that they had to bring in artists to, to kind mm -hmm. of finish them. Mm -hmm. And so there are charcoal ones that are just done of charcoal. And then these, which have some color to them, were, were called crayons. And this not like waxy crayons. It's, it's uh, I guess, more like pastels. Pastel, yeah. And I began to just buy them a number of years back and I, the first time i came across them was in an antique store and i said how much do you want for this and he, the, the owner said just take it nobody wants oh these my things god. Oh my god. and uh, i i said okay <laughs> okay um so what th th this is these are very very fragile this is actually so there are three originals that i've just reassembled you know again it's this casual eugenics i'm kind of mixing things here and so, and it's analog. And it's caused me a tremendous amount of anxiety cutting into such old, mm. uh, you know, source materials. And so I've only done a number of them. Most of the time I do, you know, all sorts of analog um, pieces, but not with old materials. So I take, I'm pretty careful and 
about these. So that's the background for this. And again, I thank you. It's such an honor to have honorable mention. So thank you. Well, it's pretty stunning to you, so. Congratulations, Rodney, from all of us. You and better. that much more interesting because I didn't know about these crayon portraits. So me neither. Yeah, I, I learned something. Yeah, but I kept looking at it and looking at it. It was so yeah. compelling. Yeah. Very Good nice. Job. Very interesting. <laughs> Thank you and congratulations, Rodney. You'll get an award soon in the mail. Yes, I'll I'll be sending out the certificates, and those of you who have also uh, will be getting it. Some of you will be getting a check, uh, first, second, third, and the Carol Ann Watterson Award, which we are going to present now, and that's James. Okay, James um, Zever who is here. I don't know if he wants to say anything. He's uh, mute. Jim, you're muted. You're muted. Well, I'm happy to say something about it if you'd like. Yeah. Okay, am I unmuted? I'm, I'm muted? All Not right, let's... more. You're good now. Okay, let's, good. Let's, why don't we hear Nancy first and then we'll hear from um, James. Yeah, I thought um, for the Carol Watterson uh, Award, um, uh, Penny sent me some former uh, people who had won the award and uh, as kind of like an, um, not exactly a training guide, but there was some, it was a specific kind of aesthetic and, I, and color relationships. And I thought this was, this was really unusual. This is also charcoal on, on uh, I believe it's analog, if I'm correct. And, it is and, paper, uh, he had with, paper with charcoal and, um, and acrylic. Right. So, uh, oh, so where are you? Let me see. I don't see you. But anyway, so I thought it was. Uh, oh, can, I, it was can, I, can I turn on somehow? No, no, I see you now. I, it was just, you know. Oh, was, okay. Yeah. Oh, so, there it is. The, yeah, these were very unusual. There was absolutely nothing like it in the other, um, you know, 200 pieces that I looked at. Uh, he had a very unique sensibility in terms of a. In a sense, it's abstract, but it also looks like material. It has it has so many illusions, but the way that he handled shadows made it very three dimensional. Um, it was a very intriguing, very interesting piece, and I, I, you know, very original. So, um, and it was like perfect for this prize in terms of its color uh, sensibility. So, yeah, the texture is great. I mean, it was just very, you know, the. Uh, the way the red moves in and out, the highlights, it was, it was, you know, it was very original and kind of unique and there was nothing like it. Looks so di uh, dimensional. Uh, yeah. Do you want to say something about it? Yeah, well, first, thank soft, you. Too. Thank you. What, a, what a nice surprise. <laughs> to have this board. That was congratulations, Jim. Yeah, thank you. And, yeah. um, well, it's um, I spend three months of the of the year in in Madrid most of the time, oh. and uh, and so this is I wanted in this in this series I wanted to reference uh, the Spanish flag, the colors of the flag, mm -hmm. and um, Spaniards are very um, politically active, and so Madrid is filled with um, protest posters and. Uh, 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 well, protest posters and uh, political uh, posters, and they almost they almost always use red for the lettering, and so red is kind of a light motif in the country, and I wanted to kind of reference that in these in these pieces. So um, that was that kind of the, the Spanish reference, and then I often do these pieces where I use lots of form, and I I um, I prepare paper ahead of time. In this case, I flooded it with yellow and let it dry. And then I flooded it with um, turpentine. And then I painted red over it, which of course resists, the turpentine resists the, the, the acrylic. Mm. So I, I prepared all the, the these different papers and I cut them up. And I never know how I'm gonna use the shapes when I cut them. Um, so I end up with this kind of vocabulary of forms. And then I begin building them. And the 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 um, the, the uh, dimensional quality 
is caused by uh, putting charcoal on each of the pieces before they're before they're assembled. Mm -hmm. And um, wow! And then I begin building them, and and I don't. Uh, the ref I just make references between the pieces that seem to work. This is a very small piece, maybe the smallest piece in the series, but I don't find it. When I work small, I don't find the piece gets lesser or diluted. In fact, it gets more concentrated. So this is, in a way, the most intense one of the whole series. Yeah, it looks monumental. It could be nine feet by 13 feet. Right. It, it has a big presence. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, anyway, that's that's it, I think. Yeah. Oh, that's well. great to know. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you, Jim. And congratulations, Jim. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Sharon thank you. Held had a question for you, Jim. Uh, yes. She wanted to know if they were rolled pieces of paper. No. No, no. And any dimension is caused by the um, by the charcoal element in it. Amazing. If That's you can cool. see the edge. Right. Yes. Okay. And then, uh, Nancy, I just have one little sidebar. Uh, the pieces that were sent to you are all Car are all Carol Ann Watterson's work. Right. Oh, okay. Got yes. It. No, because uh, her okay. work is very simplistic and graphic. Like, uh, and well, his, this work is obviously not simplistic, and it was actually really nobody's work who I felt was simplistic the way hers was. No, but, but it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in terms of those big blocky shapes. And yeah. so I felt that he, uh, uh, even though his was very complex and dense and really involving in a whole different way, that the color palette was closest to what the colors she seemed to like. And right. I loved it. So, also, the, it also, with the complexity of this still, I see, you know, it still has that uh, quality of simplicity because of the shapes that the all these little shapes create so right. very sophisticated yeah it's very sophisticated thank you both very much for that thank you i wanted to ask um i looked up um caroline carolyn ann waterston on, online and i couldn't find her work at all does, it, does anyone know what her work is like well um we uh, we have some pieces that maybe uh, we can send you just so you can see them at another time. Yeah, I would be curious, right? Yeah, Jim, I'll I'll send them to you. I'll send you what I sent Nancy. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh huh. Sure. Maybe shoot me an email so that I can remember. <laughs> okay. Who am I talking to now? Penny. Penny. Okay. Very good. I yeah. will. Thank you. Uh huh. Sure. No problem. Okay. Moving on then. So moving on, uh, now we're getting into third place, and that is Marianne Riker. It's called The Weighted Weight, an assemblage, and I believe that she is here. Okay, so I, I as I said, I was, um, some of the pieces are simpler, they look simpler, but they're not necessarily simple. Like this piece compared to the density of the other piece, they're, they're really quite different. But I thought this was really quite a gorgeous piece. Plus I loved the, t I mean, the title was very interesting, the weighted weight and the uh, connection to the materials. And um, I thought that using the, the uh, d this, uh, p this piece, which I don't know if she found that way or she assembled, but it was very pure and very striking. And um, I just thought it was gorgeous, you know, and, uh, you know, it was just beautiful. Uh, sometimes things that looks, you know, it could have a sense of simplicity without being simple. And I thought that this was very refined. And um, sometimes with assemblage, it's hard. People want to put a lot in and to have this kind of restrained sensibility uh, that was so refined. Uh, the the kind of brown in her hair and the kind of brown I mean it was very carefully chosen photograph and uh, you know the the slight yellowing uh, really all the elements went together I thought to make this really a gorgeous piece I agree um, is she here Marianne I'm here I think I unmuted can you hear me Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, I don't have visuals, so I apologize. But Nancy, thank oh. you so much. And oh, the whole welcome. exhibit is so lovely. 
and I wanted to thank the Collage Artists of America for holding this and, and all the work that goes into it. And to speak to Nancy's review of the work, um, this is actually a, a vintage sewing drawer oh, that I found. Cool. And the I collect cabinet cards. And yeah. like the other artists, I love vintage imagery. And um, I was embroidering cabinet cards for a while. And the simplicity of this woman with this very staid look oh. kind of brought to my attention the idea of this weight that many of us experience when a, tr uh, um, a horrific event may, be, may have happened and we're waiting for news or perhaps someone has left and we're waiting to hear information on what has happened or, or where they went. And it just came together. It was uh, the apothecary weight was just the right size. And that target is actually an archery target. And I incorporated that. So there were a series of these that I worked on. And this one is one of my particular favorites. And I like to use titles. I have a, I have many friends who are poets and writers. So the importance of text is very mm -hmm. key, critical for a lot of the works that I create to honor them and kind of have a playful, humorous aspect to some of the assemblages. But this took a very serious uh, turn. So, yeah. It's one of my favorites. So thank you again, Nancy. And well, I love your work. We, could we thank see you. the size? What is the size of the piece? 10, Ten by four. four. Oh. Mm -hmm. 10 inches this way, four inches this way. It's almost like a locket, you know, an open. I mean, it's really, really nice. Um, I love the thank little, the, uh, going down the string, the thread going down to the bobbin. I yeah. think. Right, right. That really makes it important to me. It's, I love that touch. Uh, yeah, and that's a little apothecary weight, which is, um, again, uh, you know, like the other artist, I think it's Rob or Ronald who works with vintage cards. You you start scavenging and you find these wonderful little items. And I had attained this set of apothecary weights. And uh, this is one of the largest ones. And I thought it was just key to the piece. I thought it just worked. Yes. And I was going to say just that use of a little bit of red there, a little bit of red in the, I think in a little bit of red and, you know, it just kind of moves your eye up the piece. So it's just, you know, as I said, it's very elegant. Thank it's you. Elegant. Yeah, you're welcome. Congratulations, uh, Marianne. And uh, you, know, you will receive your award soon. <laughs> Thank you so much. Okay. And second place, we have Dunya Barrera, and it's called Game One Life. And as you can see, well, this is this is yes, a tiny okay. piece, but I have to say I, I loved it. The little red pegs coming out of the nose sold me on it. Uh, I'm not above, uh, you know, uh, put it this way. I worked for 36 years in an all boys school. So I, I have kind of have that sense of humor. So I just thought this was, you know, it was to me, this was just so fabulous. I mean, it was uh, also very unique. The idea of the pegs and uh, with that, and she looks like she's got a headache. I mean, it was humorous. <laughs> um, it was, you know, like having a sense of humor about life. It was just, I mean, it was just perfect. It was restrained, but it was funny. And uh, I just thought, it, and it's like solitaire, you know, it's that it, there's a lot, you know, it's, it looks simple, but there's really a tremendous amount of thought because it's a little tiny piece. So, um, and it looks like a record with the old school records that some of us are old enough to remember when they were 45s, you had that little thing you had to put in. And so it has <laughs> that, that peg going through it, like it's a record and it's comparing. And, and so like the longer you look at this, you know, it's it gets less and less fun, funny and more and more serious about solitaire life. She looks like she's in pain. So sometimes things start out being humorous, and then the more you, it's kind of layered in terms of its meaning. So I thought it was, uh, yeah, it was really, it was just wonderful. <laughs> Is Danica here, Danica? I don't think so. Okay. Well, but Karen is. And so we have first place is Karen Schiffman. 
I wonder, and Karen is here. Well, you know, I, I just really, I thought this piece was just gorgeous. I love it because it's, um, you know, it's almost like ghostly images in it. Like if you look at that green, there's a lot of, it's almost like a membrane or it's almost like a scrim, a theatrical scrim where you're looking through it. And then when you look through that one round, uh, and you're almost seeing a, uh, maybe like a house and it's, it's, there's a reflection in the water. And again, this is something where uh, at first you look at it and it, it looks uh, it looks not simplistic, but simpler. It just has this one piece here, but the more you look at it, you see all the relationships between the filigree uh, inside that wooden piece and the kind of uh, relationship between that almost ghost-like picture of a child and then the adult. And I just thought it, you know, it was just such a beautiful piece. And as somebody said, it's very ethereal. Um, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's just a gorgeous mixed media. Uh, uh, it's kind of like a low relief. And that's what I was talking about. Each piece is kind of approaching collage differently. And so this one has the mixture of that might be a photo transfer. It might be a tin type. Um, so the way that she's used photography is uh, really, again, very sophisticated, very intentional. And uh, the relationships that the, the almost three of, it's almost like six stripes. You have the filigree, then you have the paint, then you have the middle piece, then you have the paint, then you have the filigree. So it has this horizontal feel to it. And then it pulls you in and you're almost like you're looking through, as I said, almost like this scrim and you're looking further into it. It's like a membrane. So it's really, really very beautiful. Where is Karen? Thank oh, you so Karen. much, Nancy. <laughs> I didn't know, obviously there's no names, so I have no idea who anybody is. Oh, a, okay. Um, there, there are just numbers. Well, for, uh, thank you guys so much. It's really is overwhelming a little bit for me, but I appreciate it so, so much. You have no idea. When I found out my grandkids were here and I ran down to tell them and I was so excited. I had no idea would react that way, but thank you. Um, it also gives you confidence to move on. What What's interesting about this is the wooden piece in the center is something I found at the Tony Duquette estate sale. He was a very famous designer for films and stages and stuff. And it had a piece of glass over it. And it was just that kind of like a transparency of that building. Oh, so that's what great. I started with. And then um, decided to add, take the, uh, take the glass off and start to collage on it. And then it just seemed too small so i decided to mount it i painted the background kind of the same back color as the transparency and then i hand did the little stars and added the filigree to to finish it so um and i i called it i wonder because um it's that older woman there kind of contemplating things and the little girl you know like what will she become so I want to thank you again. It's, it's well, it has a tremendous you know, sense of mystery, which is really wonderful. Uh, I, I think that you. that comes. I'm an art historian first, and an artist second, and I think it comes from studying so much surrealism that right. I could dream. You know, so it does. It it it, it gets into your psyche. Yeah. So again, Very thank good. you all. It it really is an a, a, an honor and privilege. Thank you. Congratulations, Karen and Nancy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Karen, that it is a wonderful piece and, and we're so happy that you have won first place. Yes, um, congratulations, Karen. I have a question for you, actually. The image is uh, the woman's face, the large woman's face and the, the child. Is that metal? No, they're paper. Oh, okay. The paper cutouts, but the little girl, I think it has um, a clear piece over it that has a little bit of writing. If you see at the bottom of her skirt, mm -hmm. so it's yeah. kind of like a clear piece oh, over yes. her to make yeah. her look a little bit more distant. Uh, someone mm -hmm. asked the size of this, and it's 12 by 12 mm -hmm. uh, to answer the question that was raised. I want to thank Tony Duquette for having it at his estate sale. 
<laughs> it's a pretty nice piece. Beautiful. So, uh, so those are our awards. Wow. So thank you, uh, Penny. That was great. And all of the award winners, thank you again. And congratulations. Congratulations. Nancy, thank you so much for, for sticking with us here tonight and, and giving <laughs> comments i know you've had a rough day <laughs> a fun day but rough and i was just uh, gonna say yeah i was just gonna say to the people that uh, well if you're in la uh the, uh there was the other art fair and this woman christine shoemaker who had done a whole series called perceive me anyway so she had the show there and i had work in it and i also work in the catalog but they had new drawing uh so people could sign up and they had it set up, it was very private. So it was like, I did a marathon drawing thing today. And so I was like gone from nine o'clock in the morning to four o'clock. So my eyes are rolling back in my head. So I think I'm gonna actually leave. I wanted to be here. I hope it's okay. I wanted to be here to talk about the, the you know, those uh, those works. And also to tell you what, a uh, you know, what tremendous work was, uh, you know, was sent for me to review. So anyway, congratulations to you all. and. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to, we're going to, uh, you know, what you will miss is that we're going to ask if there's any of the artists here uh, present that have a piece in the show that would like to talk about their piece. But uh, thank you uh, for joining us this far, and we'll see okay. you another time. Okay, thank you. And Take so care. I will ask, uh, again, a big congratulations to all of you award winners. And um, now I'd like to ask if there's anyone with us that has a piece in the show that would like to talk about it. Uh, Pat can find it and uh, feature it, and you can tell us about it if you wish. Okay. Uh, uh, if you do have a piece, could you please uh, put something in the chat to yeah. uh, let us know that you'd like to speak about it? <laughs> How do we know what pieces are in the show? Should we review the show? No, I I, I can find the piece, the piece if I know who it is and which piece they want me to show. Mm -hmm. okay, uh, but okay. but uh, but uh, someone is saying, uh, will we see the pieces in the show? Can we can we? Well, go you would have gotten a letter. You would have gotten two letters. One uh, with work that was accepted, and one about work that wasn't accepted. Um, well, I, so well, I think if you want to see the show, you have to go to score, go to our website. You can go on our website and click on the show and it'll take you to it. And then, um, you can go to, uh, San Fernando Valley as VACC and, uh, their site and click, and it's in every, um, any correspondence we send you should have a link to see the exhibit um but for tonight i guess uh we'll just if someone wants to talk about their piece we will find it and you can say something about it tell us more about it um the details okay karen karen has um asked to speak about her other piece and so i will share my screen and show it <laughs> thank you and here it is. Yeah, just uh, this is just a traditional collage, but, but I wanted to just point out. So I started out with this beautiful little amwa, and then I cut little pieces there. So the little girls were stepping out. And I had on my desk somewhere that be brave little thing. So I thought I'm gonna use that. But what what's, I think is important here is what are they being brave about? And the background, I believe is a cover of Time or Newsweek magazine. And on there are the names of all the schools where there've been school shootings. Oh, so wow. it becomes, it looks like, you know, a very little charming piece, but it's actually a political piece. And um, so I just, that's the reason I wanted to mention it because you wouldn't know that just by, by looking at it. Um, Anyway, unfortunately, we have to tell our children to be brave today, which is so sad, but yep. that's all. Thank you. Um, I seem to have lost my chat here. Oh, if somebody Barbara could tell and, me. 
I'm going to tell you it's scale heart soap, uh, Geisha, and Godzilla. Uh, can, you, can, can you just, uh, just before this, a uh, whole bunch of pieces from the show showed up. So if you'd get it, take away her piece, yeah. We can scroll through a little bit. Now, who was it? Sharon said, uh, there's someone named Sharon said she had a piece in the show that she'd like to talk about. Am I right? That was me. I, I believe I received the email that said it was accepted. So apologies if I'm jumping the gun here. Um, but it was almost a photo montage with uh, Mr. Peanut standing next to a car. Oh, What's that's in it. Yeah, that's there. Uh, wh what is your last name, Karen? Oh, H E L is in Larry, D is in David. Oh, are. yeah, there he is. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, have you not seen the show? I I have not. This is this is my first. Oh, uh, well, next time <laughs> when you get your acceptance letter, there's a, a link to where you can see the show. Okay, well, thank you. I am very, very new to this, although as a hobby, I've been doing this on and off. And again, it is an honor to be with everyone and just quickly want to say that, you know, my collage, I, I hope for, for some reason, there's always a message that comes through. And I love using old messages that are iconic uh, images um, in, in my collage. So just thank you. Well, that's great. It's an interesting piece. Tell us a little more about about the, the message. So, so these these were images that I got from the New York Public Library, and I I just you know New York in the seventies is quite a fascinating place I think, and I just love the color of the juxtaposition of here the the black against the kind of bodega pastry shop. And I saw Mr. Peanut, and I think he's kind of iconic, and he was just the right size to be driving the car. So um, it, it was a little inspirational. But the, the writing, it, it, it also is part of the old photograph, which I thought was really beautiful. So I wanted to include that in, in the collage itself. Very nice. Well, congratulations on getting in the show, because and that and, that's and, and a, someone did say this is all very inspirational and it it certainly helps me move forward so i want to thank everyone for all their work <laughs> thank you thank you um adrian dedick uh she actually said she wanted to talk about hers um she's i think we accidentally skipped her okay um here let me find your piece okay <laughs> we have there you are all right oh nice um yeah so i'm uh i'm just so excited about this group because uh this is the direction i want to be going this is this is the furthest i've achieved with this piece as far as getting more collagey and layered because i tend to be more my pieces tend to be more maybe illustrative and 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 not and not so collaged so um i was really glad um um about, about being inspired by this group and seeing all the wonderful pieces uh in this show this was i started with uh, I, I used to do printmaking so i started with an etching that i had and the original etching was the figure in the center and it was just a black and white etching and then i uh added um some uh, I think paint and pastel to give uh, to give her figure color, and then um, added some fabric in her hair. There's a ribbon uh, beneath her one foot. I added, you can see rice paper in the background. Uh, the other figure images are from other uh, new drawings I had done, actually uh, lithographs that I had made, and I um, reduced. Uh, scanned the image, reduced it, and printed it on tea bags um, to give a little bit more transparency to the image. Also, the door is um, from another one of my pieces. It was just one section of uh, of the piece that that also had a figure. And then, um, yeah, and then I added gauze and other texture, and then added the stitching. 
um, that to kind of meander around and, and kind of connect um, all the all the different elements. So um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm tr I'm trying to get more going go more in this direction. So um, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> oh, it's a lovely piece. I really like it, and I think the way that you have framed it was perfect. <laughs> You know, just a really simple natural wood it, it, the coloring and everything looks great. I like the piece myself. Or... Anyone else? Uh, uh, it looks like Gayla, Gayla would like to speak. Uh, my piece is Geisha and Gorilla. There you go. Mm -hmm. Hi, uh, my piece is Geisha and Godzilla. And I was sort of inspired by the anniversary of Hiroshima and the bombing of Japan, obviously. Um, it's a multimedia mix in terms of the gilded gold. Um, try to bring in a lot of the symbolism, for example, on her kimono that symbolizes the rivers coming together in, in, um, in Hiroshima in terms of where the bomb was struck. Her heart is a map of Hiroshima at the time of the bombing. Her obi, her cummerbund, actually has the peace treaty that was signed after the war. Mm -hmm. um, and to me, you know, there are a lot of the protest posters that came out, and I was so moved by Japan in terms of its of its anti nuclear stance. Um, if you look at what happened after World War II, we obviously know a lot of the radioactive. Um, creatures such as Godzilla and other creatures sort of emerge from the dust of the nuclear war. So that's what's captured by Godzilla, but the geishas turned her back on him. Mm -hmm. um, Powerful. So piece. behind Godzilla are many of the uh, the damage that was done to the, the residents, the citizens. Mm -hmm. So wow. it was my piece. Very nice. Very powerful. Thank you. Thank you, Thank for, you for having this collage. I heard about it from another person. It's a delightful group. Oh, so by the way, I didn't get a letter or an email, so I didn't know my status. I just came to sort of see other people's work. So thank you for including me. Oh, you didn't get an acceptance letter when you got in the show? You knew you were in the show. No, but I you now know. <laughs> so it's great. <laughs> well, when you, you, uh, an online jury shows is where we, uh, you enter to get in the show and right. they they send you an email later telling you to check to see if you're entered or if you were accepted or not okay so i may not know <laughs> now, look at the letter <laughs> and follow the directions and you'll see uh, you'll see an acceptance letter or not accepted it says accepted or not accepted and there's a letter that follows that gives you the link to the show Okay. Well, I'm very happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Well, good. Thank you. I'm glad you are too. And I'm so happy that you're a member. Anyone else? Hey, Barbara, there was a Taryn Jackson that was in one of the chats. T-A-R-Y-N. Okay. That, that's uh, the first name. Here. Oh, this is sure. I'm here. I have uh, two pieces in the show. Oh, there you are. Which one would you like me to highlight? Um, I, I guess forbidden fruit uh, okay. is fine. So um, my pieces tend to have a little bit of a humor, a little bit of uh, darkness sometimes, um, but this has a, kind of a little bit of both the sort of foreboding of uh, someone protecting their eggs. Um, and then she's kind of this hybrid uh, creature um but i think that there's probably a, a more serious undertone of just women's uh reproductive rights and bodily autonomy that's happening in this piece uh you know with a little bit of a sense of humor as well nice love the color very powerful yeah thanks thank you and it looks like uh, Quay Lin would like to speak. Okay, I have uh, whoops, two pieces, and I guess one. I'll talk about the one. Uh, sorry. <laughs> oh, no problem. I'm 
Whoops. I feel kind of barely prepared anyway. <laughs> so if you so <laughs> give me a couple seconds. Okay, and I'll need to stop share and come back again because not a problem. Something went crazy. <laughs> what, what 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 are we doing? I I'm I stopped share for a moment and I'll have to uh come back and okay. find it. My screen just went a little bananas. <laughs> uh, <laughs> things do go bananas, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And here we are back again. Yay. Good. <laughs> You're not sharing yet, Barb. Right. <clears throat> uh I'll be sharing in a moment. There we go. Okay, and we're looking for um it's Quailin, kind of in right? the middle. Yeah. Uh, and it's I think it's called the scheme mm -hmm. and it starts with that's the one. It's the scheme of a lone woman who came. All right. Away. Okay. Mm. Well, Okay, this one has gone through several iterations and one finally kind of hit, I think. And um, I started with this really cool embroidery of this Japanese woman who looked like a country woman. You know, she's not refined. She's just like a country woman and a little crude. And uh, then I said, oh, what might happen if she were like a foreign born person in America and was thinking about her plans for her daughter. And I and I got this, I drew this image of um, this kind of caricatured person who could be her daughter, who incorporated a lot of American elements and Western elements that, that she herself did not have. It was like passing something on to another generation. And, or, and then I thought, well, it could be her too. But it's it it was kind of originally meant to be her daughter, so there was like brush strokes and drawings, and two images of Caucasian children with cancellations because there were stamps and they were there were canceled stamps, um, and there was brush strokes, and then I added elements to show her dislocation, and there's um, like get a slippers to the right, they're they're not. Um, they're they're turned on their side, and it's an image, and it's and she's been like cut off from her roots. There's like you know like tragedies in her background, and fathers and husbands, and this is and that's. So they're not really specified, and now she's alone and in, in a, another country scheming about the future, really. And then I realized after it was getting close to done that in a way it must have recalled my Japanese great-grandmother. I'm Chinese, but I have a Japanese great-grandmother who was unknown to me until I was like 60 years old. And it's not like I've ever met any of her family. It was like my great-grandfather had a um, affair and um, my grandfather was the child and, and my great Chinese great grandfather kept the baby basically so you know you could secretly raise this half Japanese baby and and it would be like um you know a kind of a secret almost to the the later generations who didn't hear it when we were growing up and it, it started to seem like it was like her because I found, um, I think I found her on Ancestry and got a little information about her family. And indeed, you know, she kind of looks like she schemed for her oldest daughter. And then it kind of recalled my family history. And so it had more meaning to it. And that's what I have to say about this piece. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> okay. Deep. I'm kind of, it's personal almost. <laughs> yes. Very nice, though. It's very dramatic. Okay, now, a Adrian Dedick, did you want to talk about another piece? 
Are you here? No, I'm here, but I already talked about my piece. That's all I have. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Is uh, anyone else? How about? Paula, I I would I let me I want to see my piece. I want to I might say something about my piece, Sylvia Golden. Yeah, I I'll say something because it's humorous to me. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, a a deep set into a uh, box, a wooden box, and uh, then the the. The wood, the wood, flat wood was brought forward, and with all of the elements on it, it's an old clothespin representing a person. And the name of this is "Sometimes I Can." Sometimes I can sneak out of my body, and uh, <laughs> it always makes me laugh. Um, but it was uh, probably, you know, those times when you are holding yourself strong like the clothespin, and uh, you wish that you could just escape. Um, but it uh, it has meaning to it in that way, but it always makes me laugh anyway, because <laughs> I want to sneak out of my body. Okay. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Okie dokie. Anybody else? Okay, I guess I would talk about one of mine, since nobody's really talked much about digital. Oh, good. That's what I do. Uh, okay. Which one do you want me to show? Um, well, you can do the uh, we're killing our planet. <laughs> OK. OK, this one, you know, I have fun playing with images. I don't much think about what they're going to be until they are. And this one, I was at the Japanese gardens at Disco in Descanso Gardens, and they have these great big bulbous uh, hanging globes. And I took pictures of those, and then I started playing with them. And I came up with this image that reminded me of what we're doing to our planet. And again, there was no intention initially. I just keep playing around until I get something that means something to me or that I like that's beautiful or not. And this is, you know, in these two images that I put in this uh, particular show that I entered had to do, you know, they're more political. It's just the way it came out with interplay because it's us and our planet and who are we choosing, what are we doing and why. So that's basically it. Hey, thank you. Um, thank you. Thanks, Carol. You're welcome. I'll say something about one of my pieces. It's Suzanne. <clears throat> Excuse me following Carol with the uh, digital. Okay, so you want the um, um, digital one? Journeys, no, I don't have a digital one. Oh, right. Journeys mapped in memory. Okay. Yeah, for this show, I have done digital photo collage for so long. I uh, wondered if I even knew how to do cut and paste analog collage anymore. <laughs> So behind me, you can see one of my digital photo collages that's in a show that uh, is actually going on right now. So I had a uh, canvas, 11 by 14 canvas, that I have been kicking around literally for years. I used to do a lot of image transfer collage. And this canvas um, was a had a image transfer collage. It was sort of a... Um, Mediterranean, maybe Turkish kind of uh, arch with, uh, you know, an extended landscape and there was nothing in the middle. It was all white and nothing ever spoke to me about it. And I thought, well, let me see what I can do with this. So like Carol, um, I might have an intention, but I never really know uh, where my work is going to take me, I just start, and it sort of takes on a life of its own. So I thought, you know what, I'm just going to try to collage into this um, image transfer and see what happens. So I first started by blocking out the white uh, background with a black piece of paper. And I kept some of the you can see some of the image transfer. It was always, you know, a little uh, obscure. So I went into it with uh, pencil 
graphic and also, um, you know, trying to to bring out what some of the images were that were recessed. And I had maps and I so I started and since the last several years, my husband and I uh, have not traveled at all. I used to travel a lot. And I miss travel. And uh, so I just started in. I had fragments of watercolor that I clipped, clipped off and uh, found a photo that was in all of my stuff that I have. We all have all of those stuff, <laughs> papers here and there. And then I collaged another image transfer that I had done, which is up at the far right. And there's a couple of found images in there uh, other than the photograph. And uh, I thought maps would do. So I just started putting maps in and it uh, was sort of felt reminiscent to me. So I called it Journeys Mapped in Memory. Nice. Thanks, Suzanne. Welcome. Anyone else? Is there anyone else that would like to talk about their piece? Uh, can we go back uh, to just uh, seeing uh, everybody who is still here uh, on the screen? Uh, what you can do, Sylvia, is go to uh, your view. It's a, a whole bunch of blue dots, a, a grid of blue dots. Right. And if you click on that, it should give you the option for gallery view. Okay. Uh, I have gallery view, but... Um... Well, I can stop sharing. So that... Yeah. Okay. That's, that's what I meant. Okay. Okay, good. Thanks, Barbara. Thank you, Barbara, for stepping in. And if Pat is still here, continue to say thank you to Pat. But uh, Barbara, I know you took over here. Uh, well, look, we still have a few of us here. Is there any, uh, now is the time, I think the reception is coming to its end. But if there, if you'd like to have a chat, mm -hmm. anything you'd like to say, now is the time. Any announcements you'd like to make or anything you'd like to say about the show or CAA or yourself, now's the time. Hi, Pat. <laughs> I've, I've been here spotlighting people. Yeah. It, it, it's hard She's to do working. every... <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it's kind of a two-person job sometimes. Yeah, we did pretty well, but any... Oh, yeah, so is there any... Unmute yourself if you want and say well, hello. I'd like to just make a statement about our membership again. Uh, there, we had so many very last minute. So we knew that all of these people popping in, we had 16. Uh, it was just crazy. I wanted to, to join to enter the show. So we sort of have something going. If somebody entered, you know, joined and did not get accepted, will you remain? So we will we will have to find out. But <laughs> uh, I was very, very thrilled to see so many of the people who did join at the last minute. Uh, get in the show. Got in the show. Oh, and uh, like I said, one got an award. So it's, <laughs> uh, it's really wonderful. We have so much talent in this group. Uh, it's becoming very intimidating. I mean, those of us <laughs> who have been around for a long time, got in every show, you know, you just expected to get in. And, you know, it's gotten to the point now we don't get in every show. <laughs> and you think, what? <laughs> uh, there's just so much talent. And uh, so I just, uh, it's just a great group. And yeah, well, I'm so happy glad. to have you all with us. Yes, that's that's it. Thank you for all being with us. And I just, I think another reminder about the newsletter, Quaylin does such a fantastic job and and uh, you just have to be sure and open it and go through and see all of the wonderful uh, articles and, and artwork that she uh, puts in the show. Plus it's very informative. There's tips and yep. tricks a lot of times. And of course the Facebook page is, you know, with, uh, thousands of members uh, not all of 
the people on Facebook are members of CAA, but uh, they do share their work and it inspires us. So remember to uh, keep in touch with us that way. And our website, always check our website to see if there's anything happening that you may have missed. Yeah, uh, and another thing, Sylvia, um, too. You know, a lot of people don't, I mean, we have so many members. We have, you know, 219 members and we had 25 that came tonight. And at our regular general meetings, uh, there's usually, I think we've had as many as 45. And of course, you know, time factors, people are working. We have a lot of younger members now that have to work. They, they you know, we've talked about different times and having it in the evening and, you know, the time factors. But all of our meetings are recorded and they can be accessed on our website. And the nice thing about it is if you don't want to hear all of the chit chat, you can just scroll right to the speaker, get the meat of it. And uh, but, you know, please, if you don't come, look at the past speakers. We have amazing speakers really really and you know just uh so look at and, the website and also uh, it's okay to invite your friends to a meeting um when we had in in house meetings we would uh guests were uh, allowed to come they pay five bucks but there's no charge and if you want to invite a friend who might be interested invite them to a meeting just pass along the link to the Zoom meeting and uh, include them. Uh, they're more than welcome. And um, and let's see, is there any other things that we might want to mention at this time before we go on? Oh, be, oh yes. Penny, Penny yes. would talk about the next show. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so uh, the, the winner of the poll <laughs> is What Lies Beneath. Oh. And that was clearly the favored one. Uh, all, for those of you who are not on the board, we we uh, submitted names for an, our next show and uh, voted on them. And, and now is she's telling us that the one that won is beneath. That was mine. <laughs> what lies beneath. What lies beneath. Yes. So those of you who hung out, you're getting a heads up. <laughs> and uh because we'll, we haven't announced it yet and actually some of the board members are finding out for the first time that's that right <laughs> yep so, yeah we all are that's the yeah, favorite we all are yes <laughs> okay. and, uh, that will I be thought it might end up being constructs that was another one of mine because that was a popular one too I so, saw yeah. I'm mm -hmm. trying to get hold of a Marianne Riker for a picture. She was the only. She uh, left, that, I think. Pardon? What? I'll ask her to unmute. Left. I can't hear what Quaylen is saying. Yeah, I'm trying to get hold of Marianne Riker for a picture because she's the only winner who came, who did not show up on our on the images, and I couldn't get a, a photo of her. So I was trying to do that. She's and not. she just wrote a note saying, you know, that, that she likes our meetings. And I quickly typed her a note. Do you have time to pose for a picture? And I'm just trying to locate her. Is well, she, I, is somebody she didn't have a uh, camera. It might have been her. Right. It might have been. Her. Yes. But, okay. Well, she, is, she, is, is she gone now? Well, I, I, uh, she's her name is still here. She's her here, but us. she's not responding to messages about asking her to unmute or show her video. So. Okay. And then I'll 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 drop it. I just want to make sure that she's not left out um okay. to you know to her detriment. Okay. I have a shout out to one of my dearest friends who came tonight, Deanne Shaw. Oh my God, you mm -hmm. came. Oh <laughs> thank you so much. She just lost her husband, one of our dearest friends, 62 years. So she, she, thank you, Deanne. I'm gonna cry. You're welcome. I love you. That's sweet. That's very nice. Well, um, okay. Anybody else have uh, something wonderful <laughs> to say or not? <laughs> and I guess that we need no. to 
You got to went to the oh Patrice, yes. Yeah, hi. I'm um I'm just calling in from Northern California. I met a lot of you, the core members, Sylvia and Suzanne and Quaylin. It was so great about a year ago when I um oh. uh joined and and um entered a show and um Burbank, the uh... Burbank, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was a great. Uh -huh. It was so. It was so much fun, and um, I'm I'm one of the um, numerous people, I guess, who submitted for this show. But it's such a formidable group. I didn't get in, but I'm uh -oh. just so happy to see all the wonderful <laughs> works and um, to be part of this group and just to say hi. That's really that's that's the bottom line. I just wanted to say hello. Well, really was, nice to see I, you all. I, oh, you I too. Love to see you because we had such a lovely talk at the uh, the that other gallery, and it was yeah. so nice person. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, better luck next time. You never know. You know. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes, you know, you get rejected and that same piece in another show will get first place. <laughs> oh, that it's, 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 it's all good. It's all good. Just happy to see you all in your work and just say hi. Thanks. Nice to see Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you. I do want to um, say something. This is Abby over here. Abby. Um, I just wanted to say, I look forward to the presentations, the Zoom presentations that you put together every couple of months. They're so inspiring. And uh, I've applied to the three shows that you've had since I joined, and I've been lucky enough to get pieces accepted in all of them. So it's been very encouraging for me, and I feel like a real, uh, I've found a community, and it has really uh, been very enriching for me. So I wanna thank you. Oh, thank you, Abby because I'm your contributions help make our shows wonderful. So thank you. Thank you. Um, I also wanted to say, I didn't, should have said earlier uh, about our workshops. You know, we try to offer a workshop or two uh, every year and uh, just to keep us, you know, on our toes and give us a challenge. So if you have any ideas for uh, a workshop or know someone that does them, please notify me or, uh, the workshop, uh, Barbara Mathis, you can find her number on the uh, list, you know, on our website. But yeah, we uh, our workshops are always fun. Anyone else I want to saw, say anything? Adrian? No. Anybody? Well, I think we should uh, call uh, this the end of the reception. And uh, it's been a pleasure to see you all. And thank you so much for attending and so much for being a member of our group. It just enhances us all when you are here with us. And thank you, Sylvia, for all your hard work. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for thank the show. you. Well, it makes it easy because the board is so fun and wonderful and efficient. And that makes my job easier. So thank you all and ma hasta la vista. Bye everybody. Bye. See you in May at the at our yes. next meeting. I'm calling oh, World Collage you. Day too. Oh, World Collage Day. Yeah. Don't... yeah, enter. Look that look into that. You'll get some information from in the newsletter and you'll love it. Good Go night, for... everyone. Good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.